Well, hi again, everyone. It's Jeff Hopper with Lynx Players President Jeffrey Cranford. Hello. Talking about spiritual due diligence, uh, study number four, the nature of scripture. And we've come to the last lesson, which is always a review lesson, Jeff. And so this time we're, re we're looking in review at what we've learned about scripture itself. But let me ask you a question that maybe is, is more personal in the minds of some of the people who are watching now, and that is that through this study, they have become convinced of their need to dig into scripture more. Correct. I hope so. Yeah. If that is the case, and you were sitting across the table from someone who expressed that to you, I, I, I need to get into Scripture more. Tell me how to do it. Where do I start? What do I, what do I read first? What, how do I make sense of this? Uh, what would you say to that person? You know, I get asked that question a lot, and I'm sure you have too as mm -hmm. well, Jeff, through the years. And uh, it's, it's, it's a difficult question to answer because different people are in different places. I, I always try to kind of tune into a personality type. If someone's a little bit more uh, engineering background kind of a guy or if a guy's a little bit more artsy and you can just mm -hmm. kind of feel he's a creative guy. Sometimes I'll start guys in, like I said earlier, uh, the Psalms or the Proverbs at times. Typically, if they do that and they say start in the Proverbs, say start in Proverbs 1, I'll simultaneous to that say, hey, if you're going to spend 15 minutes reading your Bible, spend the first seven or eight minutes in Proverbs and then spend the, a commensurate amount of time in the Gospels. I mm -hmm. think the, the best place to start is in the Gospels with a fundamental understanding of the outlay uh, of your Bible. So you have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, which give the story from four different perspectives of the life of Jesus, all inspired by the Spirit. I'm a firm believer in the inspiration of Scripture, as we've talked about mm -hmm. earlier, as well as Jeff and our ministry. Uh, but it does give different perspectives. Some are written to the Jewish mind, some are written a little bit more to the, uh, the Roman mind, some to the everyday guy like Mark, full of action-packed guy. So you may want, find one gospel that speaks to you a little bit more profoundly than the other. Then recognize, I would then suggest, as you continue to read through the Psalms and Proverbs, after you've read the Gospels, go to the book of Acts. The book of Acts is the birthing of the church. Uh, so it get, it, you, it's silly to go into a letter and go, well, how did that letter get there? Who are the Corinthians? Where did they come from? You can read the, the, the books of Acts uh, all, th all through, and you'll get really the early birth of the church. So you get the ascension of Jesus in Acts 1, and then what happened to get to where you have churches and letters mm -hmm. and things like that. And then maybe slowly working through some of the letters. I always do, I like to do both. Have be reading a little bit in the Old Covenant, uh, Old Testament or Tanakh, depending on your background, and, and then a little bit in the New Testament. And I think it gives you a, a nice, complete perspective, both historically and preparing the way for Jesus, and then the advent of Jesus. And so that's usually what I suggest. Uh, obviously, it helps to get, you know, if you're in a links group or a fellowship of some sort, uh, biblical teaching is great, but for your own personal study, this is uh, a way that I've always uh, suggested. Uh, there is no one perfect way. The Lord, pray. I mean, ask the Lord, where do you want me to start? And uh, you might be uh, surprised that, that you're impressed to start in a particular place and it may be where he has you do. But that's kind of a general pattern that I usually suggest. Yeah, and I, and I think that makes a lot of sense. I think it, it makes sense as well to uh, employ some sort of devotional reading alongside that because the, de the devotional writers of Oswald Chambers or uh, Charles Spurgeon or, or even our Jeff own, Hopper. <laughs> our own Link's Daily Devotional uh, kind of teaches you that there's a way to look at Scripture so that it applies to me. Absolutely. You know, that there's application is such an important part. My, my brother is a pastor, and I know often when he will teach, uh, he will stand up in front of the congregation and say, let's pray this prayer before we go on today. And that prayer is, Lord Jesus, please speak to me. Yes. What a great way to start your study of Scripture every day as well. If you're reading in the Word, when you sit down, particularly if you're concerned that you're not going to be able to make sense of what you're reading, right. just say, Lord Jesus, please speak to me and, and invite Him to, to reveal things. And certainly we know, because we've heard it a thousand times over from people who say, boy, I read the Bible 20 years ago and it was boring and made no sense. And now that I've said yes to Jesus and I've started to read it, Lights are going off everywhere. And this is why it fundamentally is very different than, say for instance, me who knows nothing about the medical field. And somewhere to bring me a big, thick textbook from a medical uh, a library or something about surgery or brain surgery or something, and I have no background in basic you know, chemistry or any of that, and it's using terms I don't understand. 
And so I open, I go, this is absurd. The difference in the Bible and a chemistry uh, or a big uh, medical text is that there is no guy giving you the medical text and say, well, and there's a great spirit doctor in the sky who will be happy if you'll just pray to him to open your mind to understand all these mm-hmm. deep principles wow. on surgery. That's the difference. And so, but most people in a secular sense, well, there's the Bible, it's very complicated and historical, and you got to know a lot of uh, additional information. The difference in the Bible, and again, as we've talked about in review of what we've been talking about, is spirit and life and his words are living and active. That can't be said about any other document. Right. So you cannot come to the Bible as you would be coming to any other historical document or any other text or complicated text that requires to understand it in its fullness a lot of background precedent work that you've done. It's different. It's just different. Mm-hmm. And the Lord can guide the brand new believer. How many people have come to know the Lord or grown because of a Gideon Bible pulled out? We have one of the guys in our Lynx Fellowship that has made it his life mission to get Gideon Bibles into into hotels. And now he's in his 80s and he's still doing it, still going strong. How many people have just opened it up, taken a Gideon Bible, don't know anything about anything, and opened it up and God's spoken to them through something they've opened? Maybe prior, just right before they were going to commit suicide. And God, so it's a supernatural book. So it's complicated. It takes work. You never come to the end of it. But at the same time, it can, it can have profound impact on someone who doesn't know anything about it. And that's the beauty and the supernatural nature of the Bible itself. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a wonderful place to conclude our conversations. We, we really thank you for, for sticking with us through these introductions and hopefully through the studies. If you're studying them yourself or in a fellowship, we hope that these have lasting impact for you because we really, as we hope you've gathered through these particular videos, um, find the Bible to be a, a book of amazing impact not just in a general sense, but certainly personally. And, and it's, it's been a life changer for us, and we hope that it is for you. That's right. Thank you.